The Spark Awards 2018 is made possible in part by the following. Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound, hiring, and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. DataFax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of the Spark Awards. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Memphis community for over 60 years. We're excited to help honor those who share our goal of supporting our community and igniting positive change in the Mid-South. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a sponsor of the Spark Awards. Champion Awards and Apparel bring brands to life on all types of custom printed products. T-shirtchampions.com makes it easy for individuals and organizations to promote their cause and celebrate achievement. Champion is proud to have created the Spark Statue and to sponsor the Spark Awards. Additional funding for the Spark Awards is provided by Christian Brothers University, Mueller Industries, Meriton, United Way of the Mid-South, My Town Movers, My Town Roofing, My Town Miracles, and by Serves. Event support for the Spark Awards is provided by Mahaffey Event and Tent Rentals, creating memorable spaces for events for over 90 years, and by Nolan, the audiovisual solution. Have you ever been excited by a new idea, inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who are making a difference in their own way, so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark Awards. And here are your hosts, Rob Grayson and Christy Lane. Thank you, and welcome to the fifth annual Spark Awards. This is a truly inspiring event we're grateful to be a part of. It's our chance to celebrate the good things that are happening in our community. We celebrate by sharing the stories behind our winners so they can become our role models for everyday positivity, generosity, and hope. We have 13 awards in total, four categories, corporate, nonprofit, education, and individual. And our final, our Legacy Award. So sit back and relax. Over the next hour, you're going to meet an incredible group of people. But before we get started, let's hear a word from the man who keeps the spark shining the CEO of City Current and host of the TV show, The Spark, Jeremy Park. It's wonderful to be able to welcome you all to the fifth annual Spark Awards. As the CEO of City Current and host of The Spark on WKNO, I consider myself a lucky man. As we all know, the daily grind can be rough. The daily news reports stressful and full of division. But for me, every day I go to work, I'm reminded of all the people in our community who make a positive difference in the lives of others through their work, and through their charitable activities. Stories of kindness, generosity, civic mindedness, compassion. We need these inspiring stories more than ever. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to share these positive stories with the broader community of the Mid-South. In every monthly episode of The Spark on WKNO, I sit down with members of the community who run businesses, operate nonprofits, or are otherwise involved in giving back and helping others. This is now the fifth year for The Spark Awards, where we honor individuals, nonprofits, businesses, organizations in 13 categories, and the nominations, the spotlights on these everyday heroes come from you, the public. We're proud to share these stories in this special broadcast event. We have the important help of a generous organization who evaluates the nominations and selects our winners, the Midtown Memphis Rotary Club. The Midtown Memphis Rotary Club's mission is to improve the quality of life in Memphis and the broader community. We meet after work on Tuesday evenings in the Annex Building of the Southern College of Optometry on Madison Avenue. Guests are always welcome. We appreciate being asked to participate in the selection of the 5th Annual Spark Awards. Before selecting the winners in each category, we considered the nominees' philanthropic leadership, volunteerism and activism, and impact within our five-county Memphis metro area. We congratulate not just the winners, but all of the nominees who make Memphis a better place for all of us. Business is the lifeblood of any community, but no community thrives unless its businesses care about the people they serve. Beyond writing a check, engaged communities, be they large or small, find ways for their mission to help make the world a better place. Presenting the corporate award tonight 
is Johnny Pitts, co-CEO of Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance. The first award in the corporate category is for companies with less than 100 employees. Transcendix is an automated genotyping company here in Memphis, Tennessee. We serve researchers all over the world uh, by processing their samples as they work on their research. YX Gives Back is a philanthropic initiative that was birthed out of our founder and CEO, Bob Bean. He has such a heart for giving back, not only in research, but also in his community. We put together a program in 2014. It's an opportunity that we provide employees 20 to 30 volunteer touch points each year. We also partner with our remote team members that are located all over the United States, some even internationally. You see people out there getting involved and then, and then getting excited about it, and I think it kind of pushes other people in the group to say, oh, I should probably sign up for that, or other people in the company to say they should sign up for that, and, and newer employees to sort of see the way those of us who have been there for a while, um, you know, really try to get involved. You mentor and work with kids and do reading and literacy, so you, you have a lot of broad uh, areas, but talk about some of the touch points. We partner with Cornerstone Prep. Uh, we visit once a month where we focus on reading with the kids in the fifth grade class and we also celebrate monthly their birthdays where we bring them cupcakes and goodies that we can hand out and just celebrate with them all the successes that they're working on. We participate in the annual St. Jude bike ride. We love giving back with um, blood drives and plasma drives. That's been something that's um, been a part of what we've done now for years. Uh, we also have the St. Jude Marathon weekend that we have several employees run in that race and it's great to support them. And then you also have an international outreach. You do a lot internationally as well, so share some of those. The International Orphanage with Miracle Foundation, we, we support an all-boy orphanage, Dreamland, that's located in India. And we have an opportunity where every employee can make a donation to the orphanage and the company matches it dollar for dollar. We're able to fund happiness, health, and growth for the kids. Talk about your partnership with Mid-South Food Bank. At this point, just within the last year, over 520 hours, you and your team have been logging out there, and in some cases in a hot warehouse, yeah. stacking and boxing. And, but describe, I mean, kind, of, kind of give us an idea, of paint the picture of what all you do with Mid-South Food Bank. Yeah, so we've worked on a few different initiatives that they have. Um, we started out um, working on their uh, No Hungry Seniors program. We would uh, pack these boxes with different food items that they would get uh, each week. Um, to sort of help them, uh, the food insecure seniors, to get to get through those weeks. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, more recently, we've kind of worked in their um, their sorting uh, facility and, and working with that need. So they get a whole lot of donations of canned goods, box goods, that kind of things. Everybody's familiar with the food drives, and it needs to get checked to make sure that it's um, safe and, and still good to eat, and then sent out to their um, out to their different food pantries where they're actually distributed by uh, different organizations. And I think it's the excitement and the fun that people have doing this, being able to get there and, and do something, being able to contribute in some way, you know, to the greater community around us. That's Bob Bean of Transnetics, accepting the Spark Award from Johnny Pitts of Lipscomb and Pitts. Our second award category and the corporate category is for companies with 100 to 499 employees. Well, ARS Rescue Reuter is a plumbing, heating, and air conditioning business that's based in Memphis, Tennessee. We have about 300 employees in Memphis. We have 70 locations around the country. And if you take all the employees for the combined locations, probably about 7,000 full-time employees. One of the things at ARS is that we, you know, our business is all about people. They're gonna come into your home, people trust us. So it's really important for us to be part of our community, have be accepted in our community, and you can't, you can't really do that without being involved in the community. Conway Cares is a, a neat program. It's just very simple. It's basically getting to the point of, there are people in this community that are really hurting and they can't afford simple things. And one of those simple things is air conditioning. Customers nominate the people that you know they think are needy. We review that and we pick the four best. And usually it's, it's a pretty tearjerker situation where somebody really needs that system and it does help. Education That Works is a great program. It's with Memphis Catholic. We have the students from freshman to senior year and they're different students each time, each day. But Monday through Friday, we have a student come in and they basically work in our different departments. But we donate to have them come to us and that helps defray their cost to be able to go to Memphis Catholic. And, the, and their graduation rate is close to about 100%. The kids have been 
We've had no issues. They've been phenomenal to work with. And our people really get a kick out of seeing how hard these kids, they come dressed sharp, you know, they're attentive, and it, it really does help pick up our morale as well. Talk about Night to Shine and working with Tim Tebow and his foundation. Tim's been a part of ARS for a long time. So basically, we've partnered with Tim, and we are the national sponsor for Night to Shine. And Night to Shine is just an amazing, amazing event. Um, in the spring every year, they do a prom, and it's for disadvantaged children and adults. I mean, kids that have some kind of mental issues or physical issues, and they probably never went to a prom. They might not have finished high school. They might have been in some other uh, learning, learning curriculum. Today, it's being done in over 500 churches around the world in 33 countries. It's just mind-blowing. Every year, it's gotten bigger, and we're really proud to sponsor that with Tim. Talk about your work helping veterans. In Memphis, Alpha Omega helps veterans that are really down, in, you know, from post-traumatic syndrome out of the service, and they help them all the way through all the problems. And they house anywhere over 100 to 150 people at a time. And we're really, you know, excited about what that does. They're, they're integral people in our community, and we need to, they've served us, we need to serve them. And Home Depot is a part of that, too. Home Depot looked at their foundation and said one of the things they wanted to do was help veterans as well. And they set up a unique training program where they're training veterans when they're when they're leaving when they're leaving the service or they're transitioning out for HVAC and plumbing jobs. And we are hiring them as fast as they can train them. And we we're just in the early stages of that program, but we're taking it nationally with Home Depot with their support. And we're elated. It's going to be a great program for ARS and for our service and our service uh, uh, workers that have been out there that that need some help. There we have Tom DeSantis accepting the trophy on behalf of ARS Rescue Rooter from Johnny Pitts. Our final award in the corporate category is for companies with 500 employees or more. The Kroger Delta Division has 101 stores in five states locally in Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, Kentucky, and in Missouri. So the Kroger Company just celebrated a one year anniversary of zero hunger, zero waste. This initiative will end hunger in our local communities and also eliminate waste in our company by the year 2025. Very excited about that. All 101 of our stores locally participate in a zero hunger, zero waste rescue program. And what this does is this helps us eliminate waste in our stores. So we'll take food that's close to expiration, that's still good, and we'll donate to local food banks in the communities that we serve. They understand the importance of it. They understand that in, in, instead of throwing it away, then we can make a difference. Talk about your partnership with American Cancer Society. Kroger's been a flagship sponsor of the American Cancer Society for many years. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you personally, for me, what that means. Uh, my mother died of breast cancer in 1990. She was in her 40s. It's 2018, and, and in our local community, we still have people that are fighting, that are suffering, that are dying. I had an opportunity about three years ago to be a part of the Real Men Wear Pink campaign for the American Cancer Society, and this is actually gonna be my third year. The overarching theme on that is to raise awareness. Think about during the month of October, you see men wearing pink ties and pink shirts and pink socks, and, and it'll start conversation. Talk about community rewards over $1.5 million. $1.5 million just right, right here in the Delta Division. Um, you think this money goes to uh, assist churches, and schools and nonprofit organizations. If you're a 501c3 uh, registered nonprofit organization, you absolutely should be a part of this fundraising opportunity. I love to see local products on our shelves. So our program, which is Discover Local, really provides an opportunity for local businesses and farmers uh, to get product to, to, into our stores. We work with many farmers and suppliers both in the communities and around the communities that we serve to get their products in our store. When you look at overall the things that Kroger's involved with, that you personally are involved with, what puts a smile on your face? I've worked for this company for 34 years. Uh, right out of college, started working for, for Kroger, and I know how much they care. Kroger wants to be a, a great community partner, a and we do things not because we want to get credit for it, we do it because it's the right thing to do and it's what we should be doing in our community for our customers and for our associates. That's Teresa Dickerson accepting the Spark Award for Kroger Delta Division from Johnny Pitts. 
The next set of awards recognizes the organizations that address a need in our community. These nonprofits are as varied as human needs, but they share a similar heart. The belief that with organization, industry, and hard work, we can make a positive impact on the lives of others. Presenting the nonprofit awards tonight is Jeremy Park. Our first award is for nonprofits with an operating budget under a million dollars. STS Enterprise is a, uh, which is setting the standard, is a nonprofit here in the city of Memphis dedicated to empowering youth and college students everywhere uh, to just make excellence the norm. Our ideal or methodology is to exceed expectations, uh, defy stereotypes, and create a mindset that is unyielding. Our primary goal is to is exposure and opportunities, uh, exposing them to the young professionals, of course to the Memphis, the ma this amazing city. Uh, there's a lot of companies that are engaged here in the city, and so we need our high school and our college students to know that those resources are here, so they know that there's people who care about you, they care about your development. We also connect our college students with internships and job shadowing, so they can get those opportunities early and see what that field looks like. So when they graduate, they have the experience they need so they can get a job when they go into the workforce. One of our students, uh, a young man graduated uh, from East High School, great job. He got into a job shadowing opportunity at uh, MLGNW. And so he worked, he did a great job with the internship, stayed in contact with the people who, who worked there, and eventually got a job working for MLGNW, making a, a nice amount of money as an employee now. And that's what we want to do. We want to take them from just, I'm just this kid and I can't make it, but give them an opportunity to succeed. And it's really building that confidence and let them know you can really do it. Most of the time, they can teach you the job. We just need you to have the right character. At this point, you've impacted over 7,000 lives. Those 7,000 lives are not only kids, there are students that's in our program on a week-to-week -week basis, bi-weekly, but also using our voice and speaking life into use all, all across the city. Talking about workforce development, talking about these are the skills that you should have, but also sharing our story of, hey, this is what we went through, this is what we messed up on, don't make those mistakes, but this is what you can do to succeed. Talk about the fact that this is all volunteer run. You and Jeremy both, you have full-time jobs, your volunteers all have full-time jobs, but yet they're doing this purely out of love and a higher purpose. Yeah, so so Jeremy, there's our well, first mentee. Uh, we used to go to coming school in South Memphis every day, almost every day for an hour uh, while we were in college. And uh, we were working with this one young man and it was a young man that the, the school, he had, he had a lot of behavior issues. And uh, we went to his basketball games, bought him Gatorade, got his hair cut and just hanging with him. And uh, he said to us, you know, uh, who's paying y'all to do this? And we're college students broke college students at that, right, you know, and we're like, man, nobody, we just, we just want to see you grow. And uh, that was the indication that this is needed. So we're thankful for the, the 80 volunteers that's given their time, their money, their dedication to these young people. And uh, it's been a blessing that we've had the people in place to do this, also knowing that Memphis has so much potential. And I think that's what motivates us on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, even though we have struggles, uh, work becomes tiring, uh, we do this part-time, full-time. It's, it's knowing that it's, there's one young man, one young lady out there, one step away from an opportunity for changing their life. There you see Alton Cryer and Jeremy Calhoun receiving their Spark Award from Jeremy Park. Our second award in the nonprofit category is for organizations with an operating budget between one and five million dollars. Alzheimer and Dementia Services has been around since 1983, taking care of those on a daily basis who have Alzheimer's or dementia to give them a quality, meaningful day while their loved ones go home and sleep or go to work or just take time to do things for themselves. Dementia is the overall term. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. Dementia is a neurocognitive disorder that interferes with your memory, short-term memory at first and then later remote memory, and it interferes with your ability to do daily tasks, uh, your reasoning and judgment. Uh, so it's a very devastating disease, but they are suffering from this disease in all different stages and need some place to go during the day. Our mission is dual. It's to the person with the diagnosis, but also to their family because they're just as much a victim of what's going on. During the day, those with Alzheimer's or dementia come to the center 
and we do all these different kinds of activities. Uh, nobody comes thinking they're coming to a daycare. Some are coming to work for us, some are volunteering, some are doing church work, uh, some are coming to a memory booster club, and it makes them feel good because you're talking about adults who've been productive adults all of their lives, and all of a sudden they have this devastating illness and they can't do things on their own. So we want to glory in what they can do, keep their abilities as sharp as we can. We're not going to change what the disease is going to do, but hopefully we can flatten out the slope a little bit so that they can enjoy the day. We take care of usually around 205 families a year. Part of that is because they stay with us longer. Our average stay is 671 days, and that means that they're not in an assisted living or a nursing home. They're able to stay home with their families. Uh, we see the impact of the day on the person with the diagnosis um, by their smiles. We accept them where they are, and they can socialize with people who aren't going to judge them. That's how we judge. If we don't get the smile, then we have to work harder tomorrow. One of the things is that we really feel like it's a blessing given the opportunity to take care of these people because they have wonderful memories that they share. You truly get to know them and you get to know the caregivers and their stories and what they're, you know, they're not insulated because they're taking care of somebody with dementia. They still have their teenagers or the, their house note and all the things that impact our lives. So you can imagine being a 24-7 caregiver can be devastating. But our team really gets in and on a personal level takes care of people. And we think that's wonderful. That's Ruth Ann Shelton receiving the Spark Award from Jeremy Park. The final award in the nonprofit category is for organizations with an operating budget over $5 million. Meriton is a health and social services nonprofit. We were founded in Memphis in 1961, and we currently operate now in four states. We provide services to people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We provide services to seniors, including in-home services, such as um, supportive uh, home care, also skilled home care nurses and therapists. We have a senior employment job retraining program and we also uh, provide foster care. What's really exciting for us is everything we do is based around helping people remain independent in the community as long as possible, whether that's children, whether it's seniors, um, any, anybody along the, the continuum. We, we provide services cradle to grave. Something that's really exciting for us that we've been doing for the last two or three years is services to victims of elder abuse. It gives us the opportunity to give back and provide supports to members of our community that have been here for a long time and are truly the most vulnerable. And why is independence so important? Because you know, there's a lot of benefits to what you do that have a ripple effect in the community. Right. Well, as people remain in the community, uh, our goal is to keep them independent so they can continue to participate in the community. Uh, the more people you have working and engaged, the more you're giving back to the community. And our goal is that if you can be at home. Most people prefer to be at home. Success looks like a young man coming out of foster care who um, is now going to the University of Memphis who hopes to ultimately go into to social work and, and give back to the community. Our receptionist is a success story. She went through our job retraining program and is in her 70s and is working full-time greeting other seniors as they come through the door. That's a success story. We have a, a new location uh, we rehabbed an abandoned building that had been vacant for about seven years at the corner of uh, Thomas and Adams. We wanted to be closer to the people we serve. A lot of our seniors who are part of the um, Title V Senior Job Training Program have to utilize public transportation, which is, can be a little bit of a challenge. And um, I feel like we've, we've done a lot to kind of spruce up that little stretch of Thomas. It's hearing the stories from the seniors or the children um, it puts a smile on my face when we can be more engaged in our community. I get really excited 
when um, it's not only the people that, that we're providing and, and supporting through our services, but getting other community members engaged, and, and especially the youth that are our leaders of tomorrow, and having them ingrained in, in nonprofit early on and, and letting them see um, how important it is the services we do in the community. We are here to support them. It's not about us, it's not about our agency, it's, it's not about the, the people that work there, though without them we, we couldn't do what we do. But to know when you know, I go home at night that there are other people at home that are there that feel safe, that feel secure, that feel empowered, and um, that feel cared about, that's, that's what puts a smile. That's Melanie Keller of Maritan taking the Spark Award from Jeremy Park. It's no secret that education has the power to change lives. Education helps us to discover who we are, what our potential is, and what role we can play in the world. Here to present the award in our education category is Sally Stover, WKNO's Marketing Manager. Our first award recognizes the importance of an institution in shaping and supporting the education and the lives of its students. Rhodes College is a nationally known liberal arts college. We offer a range of majors and programs. Many of them are pre-professional. Many of them uh, are connected to a student's passions. We are proud to house approximately 2,000 students on our beautiful campus, and we're extremely proud to make our home here in Memphis, Tennessee. And one of the things you're known for is community service. Newsweek has ranked you number one, and so talk about the accolades and how much community service permeates campus-wide everything you do. We have been named uh, the most service-minded college in the country. We're very proud about that. And we're often lifted up as an example of the ways that students can make an impact in their community. Our students are performing almost 400,000 hours of service in our community every year. When we calculated the economic impact of that, that's over $9 million worth of benefit that the city is able to reap from the passion and the talent of our students. Much of the community service that our students do is organized through a program called the Lawrence F. Kinney Program. They engage students on our campus and they work closely with local partners to establish ways for students to make a difference. We also have a very uh, relatively unique program at Rhodes where we allow students to use some of their uh, work study hours to be immersed in community agencies. It makes a difference for the students who spend their time in this way, but it equally importantly makes an impact on those they serve. A perfect example of this is the Bridge newspaper, which was founded by Rhodes students in 2013. Rhodes students continue to manage and run that. And the goal of the Bridge is to provide a job experience and training for those who are uh, looking to move beyond homelessness. I describe Rhodes as a brain faucet for Memphis, uh, as opposed to a brain drain. Approximately 10% of our students come from this region, but 40% of our graduates stay here in Memphis. They work here, they live here, they raise their families here, and they impact the city both as volunteers, but also as uh, engaged citizens. I am always so inspired by our Rhodes students. They encourage me to think beyond the borders of our campus and to realize that there's just nothing that could make a college president prouder. We think that a Rhodes education transforms a student in mind, body, and spirit. Our students graduate with an outstanding education. They are able to translate that education into meaningful work. They're among the highest earners in the state of Tennessee, for example, but they are also able to make work lives for themselves that carry with them a spirit of service. That's City Current's Meredith Taylor filling in for Dr. Marjorie Hess to accept the award for Rhodes College. Our next award recognizes the profound influence that a caring and capable teacher can have on students. I am a pre-K teacher at Cherokee Elementary School. 
Cherokee is an I-Zone school that is based with, within Orange Mound and we are this close to being out of the bottom 5%. When I graduated my bachelor's degree in art uh, and graphic design, the market at the time just seemed to be too overwhelming. It was a job loss after job loss. And then what I decided to do initially was to get a master's degree in art in order to teach college. So what I did then was I said, well, let me go ahead and teach high school and start there. So I got my first job at Fraser High School. So then I went and I was a special education assistant for a little while, and then I moved to pre-K. And this is my fourth year in pre-K right now. You recently wrote an essay that has been able to now be awarded $100,000 to build a fitness center. So talk about that and how huge that is for your school. I think the district sent out an email one day and the principal said, let's get this. There was a lot of paperwork involved. There was a lot of writing, a lot of just detail in the school as a whole. It took a lot of effort and a lot of pretty much weeks to really compile what I wanted to say about my community and the school. So I think out of 600 applications out of the state of Tennessee alone, we, they picked three and Cherokee was able to be one of the three based on that essay. So I guess that essay, that essay had an impact on what they wanted to see within you know, a teacher and school and just the community. And so $100,000 fitness center, what, paint that picture of what, what you're getting. Right now within our school, we really don't have an outlet. So what we wanted to do was say, hey, if we can get a fitness center in here, for one, we're fighting childhood obesity. Two, we have an outlet for our students. They want to come to school. They're motivated because we just made PE way more fun. Now, tell me about your son. Uh, I think it was about two years ago, uh, there was a little boy in Texas, and he was eight years old and he had autism and reading his story and just really, I knew I wanted him. And I mean, that's really all I can say about that. And they finally brought him to me in November of last year and he was adopted in May this year. So I am now a single dad of a student with special needs and we're fighting hard at his school. If you're proud of the school that you work at and you're proud of the community that you work at, I'm going to be honest, I love waking up and going to work every day. Every single morning now, I'm able to wake up and go to work and be completely happy. When I get home, my son gets off the bus, he runs, he tells me about his day. Helping him and seeing, uh, seeing not only him excel, just seeing my students excel, seeing them reading on a first grade level after they leave pre-K, that's really what just puts a smile on my face every single day. You're seeing Thomas Dinson of Cherokee Elementary receiving his award from WKNO's Sally Stover. Our final award in the education category recognizes an outstanding example of leadership in education. Came to the University of, of Memphis in uh, 2014 from uh, the University of Utah, served as the provost. Uh, during that time. I had previously spent the majority of my time in Texas. Uh, I had spent about five years uh, at the University uh, of Utah as a dean uh, and was recruited to come into Memphis. Uh, had a son who was at Vanderbilt uh, who was already in Tennessee, so we had thought about the idea of moving to Tennessee as, a, as, a, as an interesting one. Uh, came to Memphis, uh, spent some time in Memphis, did not know Memphis well, but very quickly fell in love with Memphis. Talk about the power of being in a, a large city and how that's able to create unique relationships that benefit the students. Uh, the, the tremendous number of relationships that are beneficial for the university. So if you look at Memphis, Memphis is one of the most philanthropic cities in the country. I think consistently in the top three, I think last year was ranked number two. If you look at the opportunities here, they're tremendous with, uh, not just with city support, but with corporate support. So part of what we've been able to do is leverage that support, create new opportunities, uh, and create support for students. So one of the more creative things that we've done actually uh, is we started a private company called U of M Ventures. The goal was to support students. And the goal was that the vast majority of our students over 
over 85% work significant hours. It, it really limits your ability to perform. And as a result, we employ over 300 students that make a minimum of $15 an hour. Our graduate students make up $26 an hour. And what's most important about that is it reduces their workload from 40 hours a week to 20 hours a week and allows them to focus on school but creates a natural pathway to this opportunity. You also, too, are strategic in terms of the tuition and even from an out-of-state standpoint, allowing more access to bring more talent to Memphis. Talk about some of the nuances yeah, with tuition. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's probably been, uh, I think, one of, the, one of the smarter moves that we've made. So if you're going to put students first, you have to recognize what are the challenges for students. The single greatest challenge for our students is financial, and that's not even debatable. So we have lowered tuition. Um, our tuition increases over the course of the last five years. We've had two years we've had no tuition increase. Over the seven state region for the University of Memphis, we created what's called a, a 250 mile radius program. If you live in two, within 250 miles, we dramatically reduced the out-of-state cost. So we reduced it by about 30%. At the heart of our mission is a mission about access. Um, so we provided greater access for this region, and the great statistic about that is 60% stay in Memphis. So they become Memphians. They become good citizens, part of the democratic process. They become taxpayers. They help fuel our economy, and they help these companies that we work hand in hand with uh, in order to grow uh, Memphis. That results in better retention, better completion and graduation rates, more success for the university, and more success for the city. Every year for three consecutive years, we've set a new graduation record. Uh, student success is the primary outcome for the university, and when you ask why an institution exists, uh, that's why we exist, uh, for students and for student service. Here we have Dr. Rudd of the University of Memphis accepting his leadership award from presenter Sally Stover. Throughout history, individual acts have been incredibly powerful. It takes courage to stand alone, but brave individuals often spark movements of people who come together and change the world. This kind of individual courage is something we need to inspire and appreciate in people of all ages. Here to present the finalist for our individuals category is Mike Bowen, President and CEO of Champion Awards and Apparel. Our first award is the Individual Youth Award. I'm a St. George's student, um, I'm a senior, and my mom has cerebral palsy, which um, affects each person who has it differently, but for her it means that she's wheelchair bound and can't walk. I started helping out with my family at a really young age. Things like making lunches for my brothers and doing laundry, doing extra chores, helping make sure my mom's okay. So it's really in my heart to care for people from a, from a young age. So that's kind of why I feel like I wanted to be active in my community um, growing up. Tell me about the Lunch Bag Project. When I was in my freshman year of high school, we got together and decided that we were going to make bags of food, water, and other like small resources that could fit in like a Ziploc bag um, to hand out to homeless people within the community. So that's kind of what I thought I wanted to do originally was use funds to make as many bags as possible um, and put flyers for Memphis Rocks in there and get them to be able to come in. Memphis Rocks is a climbing gym in Soulsville built by Tom Shadiak and basically he had a vision and he wanted a climbing gym in Soulsville and people thought he was kind of crazy for wanting to put it there but in my opinion it's all about perspective like he saw something and he made it happen and it's beautiful. And so carry that forward because now I mean this really has paved the way for a big part of what you're doing is you're creating fundraising dinners and opportunities to basically allow youth the chance who wouldn't normally have an access point but to go in and experience Memphis Rocks. So after visiting Memphis Rocks several times just kind of struck my heart to get children in there just because the vitality and youth, the energy of being able to use your body in ways that everyone doesn't necessarily get the chance to be able to do and bringing it together in a sense of communal learning and experience just ties everything together. And I wanted as many people to be able to experience this as possible, which is why I wanted to fundraise through Napa Cafe to be able to make this happen. And so what did you learn in that process? Because obviously, to see people come together, to see something that you had as your thought, hey, I wanna do this, 
And next thing you know, it's actually happening, and Tom Shadiak himself shows up to the dinner. So what was it like to see this dinner actually come to fruition? It was really exciting to see not only my teachers, but people that I didn't even know show up at my dinner because they were just touched by not only the vision of Memphis Rocks, but that a young person was trying to make something in their community happen. And it really made me so happy to see people show up and actually be supporting what I was doing. Not only has my family enjoyed it, but when I first visited before it was even open, just the atmosphere makes me feel so happy just because everyone's working together kind of to make this happen. And even if you're experienced or non-experienced, they're going to give you tips and egg you on and be kind to you. And it just really promotes a sense of community in a place where not many people might get to experience that. There's the young philanthropist, Ileana Hills, receiving her Spark Award from Mike Bowen of Champion Awards in Apparel. The second award in the individuals category is the Collegiate Award. I am a senior creative writing major with Global and Religious Studies minors. I will be graduating in May as a LaSallean Fellow, which is uh, five members of the graduating class who have uh, displayed the values of the LaSallean tradition very well. Those values are faith, service, and community. When I first started at Christian Brothers University, I joined the Honors Program. And then uh, as a sophomore, I joined Zeta Tau Alpha. And there I was able to look at how important having a group of women to support each other is. And I was also able to uh, embrace our philanthropy, which is breast cancer education and awareness. So at age 14, you were given a life-changing diagnosis. Being diagnosed with epilepsy really had to shift how I was operating in life. Everything from you know, staying on a strict sleep schedule to decisions about um, travel and things like that. If I didn't have people in my life who were always willing to support me and you know, learn how to you know, do seizure training and things like that, then I wouldn't have had all of the opportunities that I've had in life. And it's become a huge frame of mind for me for knowing like, you know, I can do anything I set my mind to. I just might have to be more careful about it. Talk about um, your work with Le Bonheur and mm -hmm. being able to raise funds and even yeah. Mid-South Food Bank and you have an online store, you I have a do, lot going yeah. on. Um, Le Bonheur I, has always been really close to my heart. Even before I had my seizure at 14, I did serve there on Thanksgiving and I uh, gave out toys to kids. But after being a patient there, I saw it you know, from the other side. So I've been working really hard ever since then to raise awareness for what Le Bonheur does. You know, they provide for the entire Memphis area and beyond, and they need funds to be able to do that. They need to, to be able to support the community that surrounds them. Most recently, I would say I probably raised money through the honors program, and that was really exciting to get my honors program involved in a cause that I care so much about. Well, even using skills like crocheting, so yes, talk about that, yes. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, I started learning how to crochet, I think I learned for the first time in third grade, but I put it down for a really long time, and then I picked it back up as sophomore year of high school, and I realized I could use it to raise money, not just for my own personal travels and be able to say, hey, I have epilepsy, but I can still go and you know visit Europe and stuff like that, but also to raise money for the causes I was really passionate about. Most anything I sell, uh, a portion of that goes towards a cause that I support, and very often that cause is Le Bonheur. Being able to say, just because you're a student doesn't mean that anything's holding you back. I've done things in my 21 years of life, almost 22, that I never thought I'd be able to do. Just being able to show other children, especially children with disabilities, that you can do anything you set your mind to, that's what's important to me. You're seeing Erin Allfinger accepting her award from presenter Mike Bowman. The final award in the individual category is the Adult Award. This year it goes to a couple. Our daughter, Milla, was diagnosed with uh, Batten disease in the fall of 2014 after a year of digression and not knowing what was going on. Our youngest daughter also has Batten disease. 
And since then, we've been in uh, grief counseling through the Center for Good Grief. And after the diagnosis, shortly thereafter, we knew we wanted to give back in ways that we could. And one of the ways that we were able to give back was to partner with uh, Baptist and the Center for Good Grief when they opened a new location in Midtown. We were honored when they approached us and said, we want to name this after your daughter, Mila, who she passed away in November of 16, and they approached us in the spring of 17. Grief is universal and touches so many people. We were so eager for our oldest daughter, who's now nine and been there, and seeing the need of so many others in Memphis at all economic levels, all race levels. I mean, the entire community, no matter your race or economic status, needs grief counseling. Everyone's touched by grief. Talk about what it's like to know that you know over a thousand people have now been impacted by Miller's house. I, that's phenomenal and we've talked to a few people that have been impacted by what's happening in that community in that neighborhood through the counselors there and I'm eager to help even more. You are, are very open and honest with what you're going through and, and using that as a chance obviously for yourself to, to share but also to inspire others. So talk about the blog. Well, I started it um, back when Milla was having more and more health problems just to kind of keep friends and family in the know of what was going on with her. So it just kind of went from there and I realized too that the more vulnerable I was on there, the more it helped other people. It's just so important to us to, to give back and do whatever we can to give meaning to Milla and Elle's life. Miles for Milla originated right before they opened the uh, Milla's house in Midtown. So we really threw it together in about 30 or 45 days. It was crazy. And it really turned out phenomenal. It was a rainy day, but we still had 300 or 400 cyclists sign up. And I think we raised, I don't know, 30, 35,000 or so dollars, you know, for Milla's house. So we were fired up. Everybody had a blast. I mean, it was so much fun. So when it came back around for the second year, I just said, hey, well, let's get behind this. We're doing even more. They have to raise all of their own support for their operations. So it's fully funded by donations. And all of the counselors that work at Millis House are trained, licensed grief counselors, which is what sets it apart from most other grief counseling centers in the country. And so we've been eager to say, hey, this is a way to give back to our community. I think when we see others getting the help, when they're walking away from Millis House, really you can see the healing and when they come through the grief and they come through the process, which we're still in the middle of, our grief isn't over yet. And to see someone come through the other side with hope and joy, means a lot and we're glad to see the impact because there is good, there are good things and there is purpose to this life and when you're in the depths of grief it's very hard to see that we're not made to function individually on our own islands. It's important for us to hold each other up so we it means a lot when we see others helping each other and we're, we're eager to serve where we can. That's Fraser and Dana Gieselman accepting their Spark Award from Mike Boyle. The final award of the evening is the Legacy Award. This is given to an individual who has made a significant lifelong contribution to the betterment of our community. This year's selection reminds us that building community means bringing people to the table because that is literally what our award winner does, sharing her talents, her gifts, and her table to benefit a broad range of local organizations and to serve the human need to come together over a great meal. Well, I've always had a passion for food and wine. My first dining experience in Memphis was at Justine's. And when I got in the restaurant business in college, like a lot of college students do, I really seemed to uh, gravitate towards it and, and excelled in it. Never knew that this would be my path. My degree was in chemistry. I thought I was going to go into the medical field. But as I worked in the industry for a while, I realized that this was really something I was very passionate about. So after working at um, Napa Cafe for just um, a very short period of time, I asked the owners if I could buy it from them. I really saw it as 
a path that I wanted to pursue. Talk about using it as a catalyst to give back. I think that's what's really remarkable is you use the restaurant to give back. Well, you know, I think it was actually interesting. There's a common thread with me and my business, and that is passion. I do have a heart for giving, feeding people, um, not just to make money or create a business, but to help people in need. Heartful of Soul is a concert wine dinner that benefits the Stax Music Academy. And that started eight years ago, actually, by doing something that I'm passionate about, which is having wine dinners and wanting to do something with either music or dance and ultimately chose music. And being in Memphis, you're going to choose probably Stax um, to go along that route. And once I realized there was a music academy associated with, with Stax Records and Stax Muse Museum, I knew it had to be a fundraiser. So it's my passion and the passion of the kids doing what they love so much and what they're so good at coming together and creating an event that's not only just sensational, it's um, um, helping them out, helping them pursue their dreams. Talk about Donna's Table. This is something that's really remarkable. You do it around Thanksgiving, so share Donna's Table. That is something that um, I, I lost my mom 12 years ago, and my favorite meal that she prepared for me was Thanksgiving. I love that time of year. And um, about three, actually four years ago, I decided that I wanted to open the restaurant on Thanksgiving and feed people in need, whatever that need was. And I thought for sure it would be a need of feeling a sense of community and comfort and family. And so I wanted to create my mom's um, Thanksgiving feast. And so when you walk, when the guests walk in, there's a turkey on every table, um, which I love that. Um, it seats tables of eight. And when they come in, they see all those turkeys on the table. They're fed family style. So they get to put as much as they want on a plate. And it's beautiful candlelight, flowers, and just a beautiful day. And I do that every Thanksgiving. I love that people know to contact me, that they know that I, and my door is open and I'm always wanting to hear what someone has going on because something that's, that could be difficult for them could be very easy for me. So that way the nonprofit, whoever I'm working with, can focus on getting the donors, getting the sponsors, and then I do my part and it makes it really easy for them. Share your vision for the restaurant, not just today, but for tomorrow. You know, I, I love that where it's headed. I love that I started doing this um, through the love of food and wine and, and, and service. And the service part has certainly changed for me. And now I see the doors opening for that to be the continued path that I stay on. But at the same time, sustaining me doing what I really love to do. And I do love um, the food industry. I do love the restaurant industry. And I'm very passionate about that. I hope that I inspire people. I don't mind singing to the top of my lungs what I do at the restaurant because I'm regular. I have an idea and I start doing it, whatever it is, and it's never perfect. It's usually very bumpy, but if I can sh share that story with someone and let them know, hey, it doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning. Just start it. Just try doing it and you'll figure it out as you go along because it's amazing how many doors and people come into your path once you're walking down that path that you're on that, um, that is for, for the greater good. And so moving forward and people seeing what I do, I hope I inspire them if they have an idea, something that they're passionate about, something that's in their heart to go and do it. Because again, that's when something you're doing from the heart, it's so much easier. Ladies and gentlemen, the Spark Awards 2018 Legacy Award recipient, Linda Hastings. You know, um, it's really interesting. I'm both humbled and empowered with this award, and it's also a gift because I'm in a room full of lots of people who've inspired me, and I think, wow, I'm among them. But looking back over what I have done and, and going through the list of things, I did it just by having I, an idea and struggling through most of it. And I never knew where this restaurant would take me. And it was not something that I thought that I would be standing, one day, standing here one day and knowing that, that it was taking me down that path of service and it would be, be serving the greater good of a community. Like, that was not something, when you go into the food business and go into something with high-end food and, and wine, you don't think that. But to be, to be standing among people that I feel like have found their purpose, this restaurant has been my purpose, but I'd never felt it for a long time. And it took me about four years ago to realize that it is my purpose. 
and I do, I do shout it out to the world for anyone that will listen to me and, and to watch me because I am, you walk into my restaurant on any given day and you see me running around and I'm running around trying to piece it all together still. And I'm so very grateful for the people that nominated me and for the people that voted on me. It's, it's incredible and the part that I'm empowered by is that I feel like, yes, look what I can do. Now, look where I can go. And um, thank you so much for sharing all of your short stories tonight. I, I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, I've got so much more work to do when I think about all that's happening and all that I can be involved in. And thank you so much for this award. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm just humbled and grateful and, um, and hope I can live up to it. Thank you very much. I see you. Thank you for joining us for the fifth annual Spark Awards. On behalf of Christy, Rob, myself, the Spark team, WKNO, City Current, all of us, thank you to the honorees for all you do to make a difference across the Mid South. Thank you, all those across the Mid South, for watching the show. We greatly appreciate you being a Spark in our community. Thank you and good night. The Spark Awards 2018 is made possible in part by the following. Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound, hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of the Spark Awards. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Memphis community for over 60 years. We're excited to help honor those who share our goal of supporting our community and igniting positive change in the Mid-South. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a sponsor of the Spark Awards. Champion Awards and Apparel bring brands to life on all types of custom printed products. T-shirtchampions.com makes it easy for individuals and organizations to promote their cause and celebrate achievement. Champion is proud to have created the Spark statue and to sponsor the Spark Awards.